what are some of the strategy sessions that you could tell us tales about that you've been involved in that are great for our listeners to learn about when it comes to developing that customer-centric mindset? Yeah, I mean, one exercise that I've been a big advocate of recently is called the why exercise. And it's almost like you, you channel your inner toddler and ask why five times. And yep. so what I found when you when you go through the why exercise is that the initial why is typically something that's really functional. Like, I just want to save time or like, I, I just need this right, you know, right now because I'm busy, but not the sexiest answer. And as you work your way up the chain, the why becomes more and more aspirational because I really care about my impact on the world, because I really want to make sure that my kid is set up to be a successful human being, because I you know, care about the future potential of, of humankind. And my observation is that both the really functional and the really aspirational are generally not where your main go-to-market positioning live, but some ingredients of both the really practical and the aspirational have to like anger what you're doing. And it's the meat in the middle that that becomes really interesting, right? In terms of like what the motivators for people. And so I just think going through the exercise is important because it helps the team see A, what's anchoring the bigger vision of what you're doing, B, the, the more functional aspect, but also be able to have a conversation about what's the right forum to be servicing different value propositions. You know, it's not that there's not many reasons that product might be compelling to someone, but you know, what's what's the right message when, essentially. I love that. And both of these examples are great at building the culture because it's one thing for marketing to have people first messaging, but it's another thing when a customer calls in or a customer receives the product or a customer continues to buy or the customer talks about it, that they feel the organization is truly customer-centric. And I think that's where the rubber meets the road here. I found another stat that I thought was very important. 68.6% of businesses don't know what their customers think, but they say they're customer-centric. That's a total mismatch. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, and and that is what we're talking about here is how you build that, that culture. We've talked about some of the barriers. We've talked about the importance of product teams working together, some of the strategies that we can deploy to get there. But what is it, what is it that truly in all your experiences and even, you know, interacting with other marketers, what is the one thing that truly creates that customer-centric culture so that you can be more in externally facing? Yeah, I mean, I always say what gets scheduled gets done. And so I, I truly do believe that it is making sure that you have a cadence where you're setting up interviews with customers on a bi-weekly or monthly, whatever the team decides they can commit to basis. And you have a broad enough group of individuals that are taking those interviews and bringing the content of the interviews back to the team. I, love um, I also think, you know, running surveys consistently is important, but those conversations, there's some a, amount of pattern recognition that begins to surface in these strategy meetings, in our functional work streams, when we're talking to customers on a consistent basis. And it, I think it's all too frequent. I've been guilty of it too. And an individual like project that you have happening for a couple of months, and then you say, okay, we'll, we'll think about customer listening later, maybe next year. I think the best organizations say, no, this is so important that we're going to make sure that we're doing it consistently. They figure out a way, whether it's working with an admin or working with some, someone on the team to actually be scheduling these things consistently. And that's been the biggest difference maker I've seen. 